Hello and welcome. This webinar is titled Pelvic Floor Rehabilitation for Post Prostectomy Incontinence. And today's guest speaker is Bill Landry, registered physiotherapist from the Family Physiotherapy Center of London. Please note that this is a webinar of which is part three of a three part series. Without further ado, I will now turn this webinar over to Bill. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the third webinar that I'm going to talk about, and we're going to go over the exercises today, and I'm going to show you an example using real-time ultrasound of some of the exercises. So the outline, again, we want to go through uh, some of the latest exercises after I talked about the uh, latest research in the previous webinars. Um, I'm going to give you some sample exercises that I give my patients. And again, I'm going to use the real-time ultrasound that I like to use with my patients to really show them how to do these exercises correctly. So how do we use this information to help regain continence after a radical prostatectomy? So there are three things I want to go over. The first, we need to design the exercises that will help with motor control and motor learning. This is one of the most important things. So your pelvic floor muscles in your brain have to learn to tighten up and hold your pelvic floor so that you don't leak and these levels are different. It basically has to maintain a higher tone than it did before the surgery and you have to learn how to do this. We need to do the exercises in positions that causes the problem. So if, for example if you're not leaking when you're lying down you don't really need to do these exercises lying down from a motor control perspective. Your tone is already sufficient to prevent you from leaking. You really want to do the exercises in positions that cause the leakage. Relaxing slowly under control from a pelvic floor contraction is very important in regaining control. So once you tighten up and you do a Kegel or you do a pelvic floor contraction, no, no one ever talks about how do you release, how do you let go of your pelvic floor contraction. And the really important thing is you have to really relax extremely slowly. The slower you relax, the better outcomes you will have. Two, we need to design exercises that are going to help strengthen the slow twitch muscle fibers. So these are the ones that are involved mainly with tone. And they've, uh, physiological studies showed that 66% of your muscle fiber tissues within your pelvic floor and within your um, external urinary sphincter are of this nature. So we do this by focusing on slow controlled contractions with lower intensity. We perform longer duration activities aimed at muscular endurance. Three, we need to design exercises that will help strengthen the fast twitch muscle fiber tissues. So 33% are really of this nature within your pelvic floor. And we do this by focusing on short duration, high intensity bursts of power, such as a maximal or a near maximal contraction with speed. This is important when you cough or sneeze or bend over quickly where there's a lot of pressure coming down and those muscle fibers got to kick in really fast, really strong and prevent any leakage and then slowly relax to that tone or that level that you need to maintain with whatever activity you're doing. So let's go over some sample exercises that will cover this. Usually I have my patients perform a combination of these exercises to help work on all three aspects, which are the motor control, uh, the working on the endurance, and the working on the power. This combination has helped men regain continence. The use of real-time ultrasound helps men understand how to perform these exercises correctly. So exercise one. This one is a combination really of all three. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to contract your pelvic floor and you're going to contract it a little bit. When I say contract your pelvic floor, again, the easiest way for me to teach a guy to contract your pelvic floor is to tighten your penis and only your penis. You're really focusing in on just that area. You don't want to contract uh, your, your tummy. You don't want to contract your butt cheeks, you don't want to contract or hold your breath, you don't want to bear down, anything like that. You should be able to do these exercises without anybody knowing 
you're doing them. In fact, you want to do them while you're doing other activities. You want to almost subconsciously be doing these exercises. So what you'll do is you'll tighten a little bit and you'll hold that for five seconds. When I say a little bit, that's approximately a 50% contraction, but it could be less. It could be 20%, it could be 30%, it could be 40%. It doesn't really matter. The point is you want to tighten a little bit and hold it for five seconds. You could down the road hold that for 10 seconds. You should be able to hold that for 15 seconds and not really have a problem doing it. That's what the pelvic floor is designed to do. At the end of five seconds, you then want to slowly tighten up again and then tighten as hard as you can. So you're tightening your penis as hard as you can and you're holding that for a further five seconds. This is the power component, okay? At the end of five seconds, you slowly relax and keep it a little tight. So you're keeping your pelvic floor a little tight for another five seconds, very important. At the end of that five seconds, you slowly want to relax and rest for five seconds. Now, if you find you're leaking during this exercise, there could be several reasons for that. One, you're putting too much pressure, you're tightening your abdominals, you're increasing the intra-abdominal pressure, which is causing a bit of leakage. Or two, when you're relaxing and resting, you're actually reducing your tone so much that you're reducing it below that new threshold that you have to maintain. And that causes a bit of leaking, especially once you tighten up again, it sort of leaks out a bit. So you want to make sure that you don't relax too much and you're always keeping a slight contraction and you're not holding your breath or using any accessory muscles. You would do this exercise 10 times, three times per day. You want to do this exercise standing in the morning, sitting in the afternoon, and lying down at night. And we do this because standing is the most difficult. So in the morning, your muscles are able to do the most. So we do them standing in the morning. In the afternoon, you're sitting at some point, you can do them in sitting. And at night, you can do them lying down just before bed. Once you're not leaking at night, then I would switch the lying at night one to perhaps doing it while you're walking. So here's an example. I'm going to go over an example of real-time ultrasound for the uh, first exercise where the person here is going to do a partial contraction and then a full contraction and then slowly come down and do a par partial contraction. So you're not going to see a defining contraction here. This is your skin. These are your abdominal muscles. This is your bladder. This it represents here your pelvic floor muscles, okay? So we're going to see movement. If we're doing this right, you're just going to see movement here and we shouldn't see any bulging of your abdominal muscles. We shouldn't see this, the bladder moving all over the place. We should just see this area here. And if it's done right, it's actually going to move in the up direction, okay? So that's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to play this. And you can see the person has just tightened their pelvic floor a little bit, okay? And they're holding it for five seconds now. Now they just went up to 100% and they're holding it for five seconds. So they're so holding, holding, holding. And then you're going to see very subtly that the tone starts to drop and there it's dropping and they're holding it for another five seconds and then they're going to relax, okay? So it's very slow and controlled and it's very subtle movements. So that's an example of that first exercise. Exercise number two. So this one we want to focus on this speed, the power. And what we're going to do here is we're going to tighten as fast and as hard as we can. So we want to really kick this in. So you're going to cough, you're going to sneeze, you want to tighten your pelvic floor as hard as you can and hold that for three full seconds. At the end of three seconds, we want to really, really slowly relax. And then we rest for three seconds and we quickly repeat that. So we quickly squeeze back to 100% for another three seconds, slowly relax. We do that 10 times take a 30 second break and perform four sets of that. And you want to do this exercise two to three times per day. So using the graph here, we're going to tighten our pelvic floor or our penis. We tighten as fast and as hard as we can. We hold it for three seconds at the top and then we very, very, very slowly relax, rest for three seconds. And we do it again, boom, right to the top, three seconds, slowly relax over, a few seconds, rest for three seconds, and repeat that 10 times. So here's an example of this exercise. Again, skin, 
abdominal muscles, bladder. This here represents the pelvic floor. This is where you're going to see the movement, okay? And it should be going in the upward direction. So, boom, they just did the contraction. One, two, three seconds, and now they're slowly relaxing. Now they're gonna rest for three seconds. One, two, three, and then boom. One, two, three, and then slowly relaxing. One, two, three. And so that's an example of this exercise where you're getting it jumping up really quick, holding for three seconds and then relaxing. The third exercise is more of a functional exercise. So this is one that increases tone and endurance. And this, in reality, you can do all day, not just during a 30-minute walk. But walking is very important for recovering uh, continence. And this is because your muscles have to work harder when you're walking. Obviously, when you're walking, there's a lot more weight pushing down on your bladder. You're, you're opening your legs, you're closing, and you're moving, you're doing different things your brain has to keep your tone much higher than let's say if you're lying down or if you're sitting. And so your tone is always higher. If your tone is higher, well, you're exercising and you're building up endurance. The other thing you wanna do is while you're walking, you wanna to learn to tighten up your pelvic floor or tighten your penis as little as you can. So you can barely feel it. And you hold that and you start to walk. Once you're walking after 30 seconds or so, you're gonna lose that contraction. It's just gonna feel like you've lost it or you're lost your focus or your concentration and you don't feel like you're contracting anymore. That's perfectly fine. That's what you want to have happen. At that point, you'll say, you know what? I'm not sure if I'm tightening it or if I have an increased tone or not. So I'm going to tighten a little bit more and continue to walk. And you basically repeat that over a 30 minute period. And you really shouldn't feel much, okay? Just when you tighten a little bit and then you'll tend to lose the contraction or not, you're not sure. But what happens is, if we were to look at this from a physiological perspective, in the beginning you'd have a certain level of tone, and as you start increasing it, okay, you're not gonna realize that your tone is increasing, but over 30 minutes your tone is gonna end up higher, and you don't feel like it's higher. And that's what you're looking to do. We're looking to increase your tone over time. And this has a really good effect of regaining continence. And then you would tend to do this during the day, whenever you can remember, just tighten up a little bit and then go about your activity. You never actually relax, you just learn to tighten a little bit and try to regain tone. So the take home message of these exercises and of regaining continence is less is more. So the reality is the less you contract and the longer you hold it, the better off you will be. No one should ever know you're doing these exercises. So when you're doing these exercises, if someone sees you and goes, what are you doing? Or they see you, you know, tightening and bulging and uh, holding your breath and things like that, you're not doing it correctly. It's really a contraction around the penis and your pelvic floor. You should be able to breathe, talk, do certain activities and do this contraction. Again, it's not all about the power. Increasing tone is just as important, if not more important for regaining continence and never ever relax quickly. The slower you relax, the better it is. Thank you very much. I hope that this helps at uh, regaining continence. Thank you. Perfect, thank you so much, Bill. At this time, I would like to remind our viewers that if you're looking for further information regarding prostate cancer care, please visit our website where you can download and order our various health education resources. There are also resources attached to this webinar. If you are interested in viewing more webinars, please visit www.prostatecancer.ca slash expert angle. And once again, thank you, Bill. That concludes our webinar. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today.